Hello everybody, hello my dears, this is Pharmacist D and welcome to my channel. How are you guys today? I hope you guys are looking after yourself and staying well hydrated. Hashtag self care, hashtag drink some water. Well, today's challenge is not to scratch your head for this clip. That's right, we're going to talk about head lice. And it's a bit difficult because I can already feel some phantom head lice on the back of my hair. Particulus humanus capitis. No, nothing's levitating. No, that's Wingardia Liviosa. It's basically, if you don't want to say head lice, well, strictly speaking, head louse. Because pediculus is a singular form louse, or apparently little foot. And humanus capitis is human head. So these are exclusively to humans. Now, we can't blame Medi because they're animals and head lice don't transfer between animals. Lice, eggs, nits are very common in the UK, especially for primary school kids and their family. But to be fair, anyone could get them. If you throw me into a classroom with my besties now, you expect me to stay away from them? I mean my bestie, not head lice, of course. What are head lice? Head lice are found on the head, hence the name but normally on the scalp. Very rarely, but it can happen. You can find them on the eyebrow, on the eyelashes, or behind the ears. Adult lice are about three millimeters long, which is about the same size as a sesame seed. If you look at it under a microscope, you can see it is an insect with six legs. Um, they all have claws at the end of each leg, and that's how it crawl and grasp onto your hair. They feed on blood on our scalp about four to five times a day, but you rarely feel anything. They are classified as largely harmless because they're not known to spread any diseases as such. We've been living with them for about seven million years now, and neither of us are extinct. Head lice can live in the air for a long time if it's left untreated. It is nothing too harmful but more irritating, but personally I don't want to raise blood sucking insects on my head that might cause a secondary infection. Any human being could end up with head lice and raising them on their head. I remember watching one of my favourite series, Modern Family, and uh, one episode, some characters had head lice. This is a misconception. Se false. Immediately blaming on the unkempt one. Head lice don't just like dirty hair, they like clean hairs too. Head lice are not really that fuss about what kind of hair they live in. Long, short, clean, dirty. Getting head lice is not related to cleanliness of a person. Of course, personal hygiene is important, but don't be nasty to people who has head lice. Green Kingdom. Lice are the ones I detest the most. My first day of school, I had lice, and no one would play with me. Yeah, definitely not like that. Having head lies doesn't mean you are dirty, but saying that personal hygiene is important too for other reasons. Life of a louse. A female head louse could lay up to eight eggs a day. In its lifetime, we're talking about 50 to 150 eggs. Normally, they would glue the eggs near the scalp at the root of the hair, where it's warm and near the food source for her baby. Don't forget their blood-sucking insects. It then takes about 7 to 10 days to hatch. The nit is what we call the empty shells. Then these nymphs, baby lice, grow and when they are 10 days old and if they are female too, then they can lay eggs of their own. It is very rare to find on any human head where there is more than 20 life lice. By no means I'm challenging you to this because I don't think there is a Guinness World Record of the most head lice on head. I don't think. Head lice can live about 30 days but it would die within one or two days if it's not on someone's head. 
Adult headlice can live a day or so without its human's habitat and without food, whereas a nymph can only live for several hours. Eggs generally will die within a week away from their humans and cannot be hatched at a temperature significantly lower than what's our scalp temperature. So if my sister haven't worn her hat for like two days and I would like to borrow it, I guess I'm pretty safe from head lice, but maybe not from my sister. How do head lice spread? Head lice can transfer normally by head-to-head -head contact or hair-to-hair -hair contact as uh, head lice can only walk or crawl very quickly as well um, but they can't jump or they can't swim, they can't fly Some clever people have found that uh, under normal condition head lice can travel 23 centimeters per minute which is about that long so if my hair you know, strand touches another head or hair in about a minute then the head lice will walk from there to there or or even 30 seconds we're talking about that, that much so, so it can happen quite quickly one step two step three step four step it's very unlikely but it's possible that they can also be transferred by sharing items like hats, combs, laying uh, on beds, pillows. I had recently been in contact with an invested person. Um, head lice could really have a difficult time attaching, you know, with its claws attaching to uh, um, smooth or slippery surfaces like uh, plastic, like my ruler, and metal or any similar material. Interestingly, data shows that head lice can survive underwater for several hours and uh, apparently they can hold their breath for about eight hours, some for longer and um, so going for a shower for eight hours and one second doesn't necessarily will kill them, I'm afraid. They are unlikely to spread um, in water, so don't worry if whoever's got head lice and you're going swimming with them because not only do they hold their breath, they also hold tight to humans' hair so they're not let go of it when they're underwater. So I'm afraid you will still have head lines after you've gone for a swim or wash your hair. No, that doesn't mean don't wash your hair when you have head lines either. So what does it feel like to have head lice? The symptoms we're looking for if we do. Pop rock? It's not like Rice Krispie and milk. No, we don't diagnose it like that. Unfortunately, head lice infestation could be asymptomatic, which means there might be no symptoms, especially with first infestation or when in an infestation is light. Unfortunately, we can't feel them drinking blood from our scalp. So there's two main symptoms, itching. but not always and normally about four to six weeks after infestation sometimes um, very rarely they can cause a rash on the scalp the neck behind the ears um, because it's normally an allergic reaction from a mixture of the lice droppings or their saliva and you know anything could cause a bit of an itch I have phantom lice and I can feel a bit itchy. Mm, second symptoms are like feeling something is moving in your hair or a tickle feeling but it might be a spider or it might be actually someone is actually tickling you. Other symptoms could be uh, difficulty sleeping because head lice are more active in the dark and um, you may get some sores from scratching and broken skin that might get infected, which we call it a secondary infection. 
So you can't really tell from the symptoms that you have head lice. To confirm an infestation, you need to find a live one. Lice hunting. Because head lice are very small, we're talking about three millimeters for an adult one and then a baby one even smaller, and they move very quickly and they avoid light. They might be very difficult to find, so we recommend using a special fine tooth comb and using dry or wet combing could help. Wet is more effective, but dry is quicker. Apparently, Cleopatra had the lice combs, which are solid gold, and they were buried with her. So you can buy this special fine tooth comb, aka nick comb or lice comb or detection comb. You can buy one in pharmacy, supermarket, online. They come in all different sizes and shape, but the main ideal feature is that the comb needs to be flat face teeth with a tooth spacing of 0.2 to 0.3 millimeters so they can capture the nids and the mice and the babies and the eggs etc. This is suitable for everyone and relatively inexpensive. There are ones to suit each person's preference and budget. Both the dry detection method and the wet detection methods are on the NHS website. I have put the link below on the description. We're gonna go through the dry detection combing first. So using a normal comb, brush and straighten and untangle your hair. Any brush will do and you don't have to buy a special one or a new one, just one that you normally use. Uh, it's fine. Basically we're just trying to brush up all the knots so the fine tooth comb can go through easier. Yes Ariel, you can use your dingle hopper if you want to. So once we've done that, then we get a louse detection comb and basically make sure the teeth of the comb slot into the hair of the root with the edge of the teeth lightly touching the scalp because basically this is where the eggs are likely to be or sometimes you might catch a lice feasting away nice so look for the lice as you comb um, your hair so hence why it's quite difficult um, to do it yourself and um, if you see a louse, trap it against the face of the comb with your thumb to stop it repel from the static charge. So yeah, I prefer wet combing. <laughs> so you comb uh, each section of the hair three or four times before moving on to the next section. But remember, every time you comb, you basically look and check if there's any nits, any lice, any, yeah, any eggs, etc. Um, you have to find a live louse to confirm and basically you carry on three or four times until your whole head has been combed through. So what do they look like? So we just, we just said it looks uh, like a sesame seed. So live louse looks a bit browny grey and black sesame and they tend to move and then nymph is smaller so they're about um, the size of a pinhead. Eggs are yellowish and nits are pale yellow or white um, and they normally glue to the hair so they're hard to um, get rid of and they look a bit like dandruffs as well so hence why we need to find a live flower. I found one, now what? Hey, Meredith, I need to tell yeah, you something. Hey, what you oh my god, Meredith, what are you doing? Baking a cake, what does it look like I'm doing? Getting rid of the lice. Oh, stop! Okay, you found one, or more than one. So before you go and shave your hair like Meredith in the office, you don't need to, only if you want to. And, I mean, we're not in ancient Egypt where it's really hot. And, but, you know, some people like being bold and... and Although these head lice have developed resistant to some insecticides, there are other ways of getting rid of them. But first, we need to check the family. Only those with infestation um, need to have treatment. And we need to treat them all on the same day and as soon as possible if we find a louse on one or two people's head. We don't need to see the GP. 
you could go and see a pharmacist. If you're at school, depends on how your school policy works. It normally doesn't warrant a stay at home pass. Neither does work, go back to work. <laughs> But don't feel embarrassed because if you have head lice, doesn't mean that you're dirty, maybe a bit affectionate. It happens and it can be gotten rid of. And do tell other people who are close to you and check to check their hair as well. Yes, that's the correct thing to do. Otherwise, you get rid of yours and Mikey down the road hasn't. You play with Mikey and you get a bit too close. Your hair has become a home for these lice again. There are two main ways of killing pit lice. Number one is wet combing. They need to be repeated several times and can take a long time to do thoroughly. Number two is lotions or sprays that kill head lice. There are two different types of insecticide but might not be suitable for everybody. NHS recommends us to try the wet combing first. Wet combing is a treatment and is also the detection as well. So um, it is very similar to dry combing, but as the name suggests, with wet hair. So normally you get someone else to help you and thank them dearly afterwards. Maybe not with a hug until you're all clear because it can take up to 10 minutes for short hair and up to 30 minutes if you have longer frizzy or curly hair. So what do you do first? First wash your hair, rinse your hair with normal shampoo. Then you get cover the wet hair with lots of conditioner with literally smothering. Any conditioner will do. You might want to buy the most inexpensive one in the store because you're going to use a lot of it. Um, this basically makes the lice harder to claw into the hair, like kind of stalling them. So if you imagine you're, climb you're doing wall climbing and then someone just throw a sludge onto the wall, then basically that's what happened. Um, this is why it's more effective than dry combing and without the uh, static charge either. So then, as normal, like like um, uh, we said, using a normal brush and just comb through and detangle and straighten the hair. Then we're using the detection comb uh, from the root to the end with the edge of the teeth slightly touching the scalp. And then basically every stroke you check for lice and if you ha find it you can wipe it with tissue and you can put it under the tap so it, basically each stroke you're you're stroking you are brushing looking or brushing looking brushing looking until you find something and then you can wash it away or wipe it onto the tissue and basically work through the whole hair you can see that's why it's time consuming section by section until the whole head is combed through do this at least twice because then you know that you haven't missed any area then you rinse the hair off from the conditioners and yeah you do it more than once every four days uh, for at least four times so we're uh, you can mark it on your calendar. So we're doing wet combing on day 1, day 5, day 9 and day 13. On day 17 we're doing a check and if there's no lice, then consider it done. So when you comb check for lice, if you find any nits or any eggs, um, this might not necessarily mean treatment failure. They're just harder to get rid of. So, um, maybe check more thoroughly in a few days time but if you find a louse then check family's members or check um, the people who you are close to to see if you're passing it back and forth to each other if this fails then also speak to your pharmacist because they can recommend um, a suitable lotion or spray for you. We don't normally recommend shampoo because um, it's too dilute and it doesn't have enough contact time and uh, enough to kill the eggs as well as the louse. 
Um, make sure you read the instructions on the packaging because all of them are slightly different to each other on the uh, contact time. So the choice is yours, depends on the preference, the advantage, disadvantage, what you previously tried and of course the cost of the treatment. Caution on these following and tell your pharmacist if you're treating for children under two, pregnant or breastfeeding, people with asthma or eczemas, we try to avoid alcohol based product. Those um, second infestation within a month or um, those severe looking infestations like there's more than half a dozen or ten or we're counting up to twenty. Uh, longer and thicker hair as I said might need uh, two bottles and um, again family members only need to be treated if they find a life louse and don't just do it just in case and if you do it you need to do it all on the same day. Avoid applying treatment products to the hair that has been washed by conditioning shampoo or rinsed with hair conditioners as conditioners can act as a barrier for these treatment medicines from um, attaching to the hair so it reduces the effectiveness of the treatment. Also wet combing detection after the treatment has finished to make sure it's all completely gone. Currently the NHS does not recommend any repellents electric combs or um, tea tree oil or plant oil treatment, um, eucalyptus, lavender oil or any herbal remedy to um, treat or prevent because they lack um, evidence and which means they're less likely to work. So in order to prevent and control the spread of head lice, we need to check our hair regularly to detect head lice early. Uh, avoid head-to-head -head contacts or hair-to-hair -hair contacts um, if possible. We're only talking about 15 centimeters away then or you know hair touching hair isn't it? You don't need to play robots. Um, you don't have to distance them either. Neither do you need to fumigate your house uh, or any excessive cleaning. Um, if you want to make yourself feel better you can vacuum the house. That's it for today. I hope you guys find this video useful and if you have any questions please speak to your pharmacist and um, I need to go and treat these imaginary lice <laughs> and um, hopefully we'll see each other next time. Please subscribe, like and share and bye bye for now.